Hey guys, welcome to my $800 editing PC gaming build. Well, I say gaming build because this thing can also game, but not much. I spend more on the CPU than the graphics card, so it's technically more of an editing PC than a gaming build. But you can still game on this thing around medium to high settings, 1080p, and around ultra or high settings at 720p. So let's start off with the processor. I think it's very obvious for a budget editing PC, we're going with the AMD FX 8350. 8 cores, 4 GHz at each core. It's a very powerful processor and we're going with this because it's, one, it's, well, it's an 8 core because editing programs usually use more than one core. They benefit from more weaker cores than less, less cores but more powerful cores, so we're going with that. Okay, so it's around $170 on Amazon right now and it's a good deal. Alright, for the CPU cooler, I usually don't include CPU coolers in my build guides, but this one I'll make an exception. Oh my god, I have tried the AMD FX 8320 stock cooler for about 8 months. It was noisy. I mean noisy as hell. Man, that was noisy. I have to open the case, point my house fan at the case so, so the noise will be bearable enough until I got my H60 which is in my build right now. I have an AMD FX 8320 and a GTX 660. Now we're going with this because one it's well it's one of the most popular coolers out there popular air coolers that is in the budget price range it's only $35 and that's the Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO now don't get me wrong guys this thing is tried and tested one of the best budget air coolers out there it received around five stars in PC part picker with over a thousand yeah it's over a thousand buys in PC part picker and uh, there's nothing I can say except it's a good air cooler for 35 bucks it's not gonna be the best in temperatures but for $35 it's a good steal now for the motherboard, it's a tried and tested too. I have this motherboard myself and I'm not disappointed with it at all. It's the Gigabyte GA990FX UD3 ATX size motherboard. Okay, we're going with the ATX size motherboard because maybe we want to add some expansion cards later or more, more horsepower, more graphics cards. And do totally do SLI, Crossfire, and some PCI cards like LAN cards or sound cards like, or cards like that. It's only $140 on Amazon right now and it's a good deal for this kind of a motherboard. It's very high-end. I use it myself as I said and uh, yeah it's a great motherboard. Now for the RAM. It's been tested that higher frequency memory is better for editing programs. So we're going with the cheapest but still reliable 1866 megahertz RAM. It's from Kingston. The Kingston Fury White Series. It's two 4 GB DIMMs of DDR3-1866 memory. Well, it's obviously it's clocked at 1866. It's only $76 on Amazon and hey, for that, you could buy 1600 MHz RAM for about, just about the same price and the same capacity, so why not go with 1866? For storage, we're going with two drives here. One for the boot drive and one for storage drive. Now, for the boot drive, we're going with the ADATA SP600. We're going with 256 gigs of capacity. Well, 256 gigs is more than enough for all your needs today, like your OS, a few key programs like editing programs, such as Premiere, Vegas, and um, maybe you have some games like Battlefield 4 you want to play on this thing. And uh, yeah, Battlefield 4 really needs an SSD if you want to play it directly. Loads really slow on my hard drive. Sadly I don't have an SSD. Yeah. Alright for the hard drive we're going with the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1 terabyte. Now we're going with 1 terabyte capacity 1 because it's more than enough for all your needs. Maybe you need expansion later on but for now 1 terabyte will do you just good. It's a standard hard drive and Western Digital Caviar Blues are one of the most reliable hard drives out there. And uh, I have no problems with this. I have one myself in my build right there. It's been over for a year and I have no hiccups with it whatsoever. So we're going with that only around 55 bucks on Amazon. 
For the graphics card, we're going with the EVGA GeForce GTX 750 Ti. Now, for gaming, I know that you should spend more on your graphics card than your CPU, but for this thing, it's meant for editing. So more of the money is going on the processor. Alright, this is around $130, it's 2 gig version. It's not one of those super clout or for the win edition. It's one of the lowest end 750 Ti's out there from EVGA. Now we're going with this because we need support from CUDA. Now I know Premiere Pro supports CUDA from older cards but there's a trick in that that it supports any card, any NVIDIA card out there that will, that will support CUDA. It's editing a note, a text file I think, maybe. Yeah, I edited one of the files on the installation folder and my GTX 60 was in there, placed it in, bam, it's supported. So yeah, you might have to do some research on how you can do that, but it's pretty easy if you ask me. Alright. For the case, we're going with the NZXT Source 210. It's a white mid-tower case. Now, it's white because it's cheaper than the black version and yeah, there's nothing else. Now, the case isn't one of those things that you prioritize in these budget builds. It should be one of the cheapest things. Well, it's should be the cheapest thing in your entire build unless you want to put it on your desk which I highly doubt well NZXT source is a bit it's a good case but I would just put it under my desk until I get something good like a fractal design define r5 h440 or one of those windowed cases out there but for our needs the, the NZXT source 210 will do you, do you just good it's only 40 bucks free shipping on Amazon so why not? Now last but not least, the power supply. We're going with a 500 watt power supply from EVGA. Now this 500 supply has an 80 plus bronze certification. Nothing else more to say. It's the standard ATX power supply. It's non-modular. Modular power supplies tend to be more expensive than regular power supplies, but we don't need a modular power supply. Our case is not windowed and yeah, there's kind of no need for it. Unless you want to show off your internals and I don't know, won't put the side panel in the case. Other than that, the power supply is good, it's from EVGA and um, yeah. Well that concludes my $800 ADC build guide, thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe if you want and uh, yeah, peace out. And thanks for watching guys, please leave a like if you like the video, feel free to message me on Facebook and Twitter and I'll see you in the next one.